about Spencer Fadden. He's founder and chief investment officer at Steelvine Investments. It's an option selling hedge fund that invests almost exclusively in commodities. And he joins us now from Nashville, Tennessee. I was giving you both compliments there, Spencer. Good to talk to you as always. Welcome to In Business. Boy, thank you for that introduction. I sure appreciate that. <laughs> hey, Spencer, you know, I know you've been on Fast Forward a bunch of times. The last time you were on, though, it's hard to believe it was about a month ago, almost to the date, uh, in July. And back then, we were looking at gold below 1600 um, And you were saying, you know, you'd, it probably rallies to 1600 by year end, but you'd sort of sell on the spikes and buy on the dips. Where do you stand now on gold? Yeah, so gold still is just moving in one direction. And it is so hard to buy a commodity when it just goes up day after day after day after day because eventually it is going to correct. And so I think as a trader, you look at your upside and you say, is there another possibility of $100 upside? Yes. But is there the almost guarantee that we'll see at some point a $150 pullback? Yes. And so I would wait to see gold back in the high 1600 range, and then I would buy that dip. I think that would make a lot of sense. Now, I got to ask you, you know, you said it's hard to buy it when it keeps going up day after day after day, right? I mean, you feel like you missed it, and yet that's a trend, right? Isn't it easier if you got a trend to follow? Yeah, so I, I think the long-term trend in gold is unmistakably higher, and so that's a very important piece. But what I think you have to observe is in the short term, uh, there's just simply one direction that it's going. So I certainly would not short gold here. I would not expect it to reverse sharply to the downside. So I am bullish gold. I just wouldn't buy it after it's rallied you know, $300 in a straight line, uh, almost with no pullback. It's truly right. incredible. And uh, Spencer, I think it was my own desire to drink some coffee right now. Uh, that made me get it wrong. It's actually when it's a hot summer, coffee prices go down. But why don't you explain? And, uh, you know, is coffee a good thing for someone to be buying right now? Yeah, so coffee is, is really beginning the harvest season in Brazil. Uh, we're supposed to have the fourth largest harvest in Brazil uh, ever this year, and it's an off year, which means that it's really not expected to be a big year, and it's come in to be one. So right now, a lot of coffee is hitting the market, and so I would expect coffee, uh, for lack of a better term, is just kind of grind lower uh, through the end of the year, especially with this heat out. How much lower are we talking about, Spencer? You know, I, I think that you could easily see $2 a pound uh, because that price is already historically high for coffee. I mean, coffee just 12, 18 months ago was under a dollar. So here you still have a 100% move higher. So $2 could easily be achieved by December. And, and, and by the way, Starbucks raising prices right along with Pete's Coffee, et cetera. What do you bet they're not going to lower them just because coffee does, goes right, back exactly. down? That's that might help exactly right. Starbucks. Good for their margins. That's actually. Exactly. It's a good point to bring up, though. Spencer, can you put some of what's happening on the macroeconomic level, put sort of commodities prices right now into context? I mean, gold is a safe haven. We, we continue to see that trade. But what does this mean overall? When we talk about corn, right, we've seen that price rise pretty dramatically. Coffee, cotton. How does this impact all of those prices? Yeah, so I think a really good story today is, is the crude oil move higher. Uh, that being more than a dollar higher in the face of a huge equity market weakness is, is sending you a signal that this is probably not as big of an economic recession as everybody is pricing in. Because if it really was, we would see crude oil taking another huge leg lower. Uh, same with, with grains. Uh, you've had almost you know, less than 5% weakness in the price of corn and wheat and soybeans. That's telling you that demand is not falling all that much. It's a supply story. So I would expect that we're going to see a floor here in commodity prices very shortly. Hey, you talk about a floor in commodity prices, you know, but Spencer, i got to ask you, I look at a, at a market down 400 points, uh, an environment where people are trying to take risk off the table, just raise cash. What about all the financial buyers that have been going into commodities, trying to play commodities? Aren't you worried that they're going to start selling and that therefore distort some of the commodities prices? Yeah, certainly. I mean, we've already been down, you know, 15 percent off the highs in virtually a straight line. And so I would expect a lot of that first wave of selling would have already occurred by now. Uh, certainly, if we get another kind of repeat of these this, this last couple of weeks, then we could see some weakness in commodities. But I would certainly be buying those. And I think what, like I said, crude oil and the grains are telling you is that we're not going to have the economic weakness that everybody is predicting here. I think we're just going to have slow growth. And, and, and that's not so bad. 
All right, which, which commodities look the weakest to you, the most vulnerable to financial selling, assuming oil's already had its move from 100 down to 80? Right. So I would certainly look at the commodities that are most economically sensitive. Uh, you can pull up a chart of orange juice. Uh, that, that commodity is a very economically sensitive commodity that has just plummeted. Uh, it's not very liquid. I, I would avoid that. Cotton as well. Uh, cotton has been a big winner. Uh, there doesn't look to be any concerns about the harvest this year. Uh, so I would expect that winner will also be sold. Uh, those are the two that I would steer away from. All right, cotton, orange juice, he's bearish on yep. it at the same time. He's saying the commodities market telling us that the rallying commodities telling us that perhaps the underlying, underlying economy is stronger than what equities are telling us right now. Or at least the market for individual commodities anyway. All right, Spencer, always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for giving some insight from the perspective of commodities. That was Spencer Patton, founder of Steelvine Investments.